Okay, sorry if I, I look weird in this. I'm I'm going to be getting used to just looking at a camera. But it's nice to know in the future this will just be something that's seamless, you know. I won't even I won't even think about it, but right now it's a little weird looking down there. Be nicer to be looking up at eye level. But, you know, it's the way the internet is these days, you know. I got to get with the times, I guess. Um I'm just going to keep it short and sharp, but Let's just go to Proverbs. I think, like, I'm not going to treat this as my personal Bible time, because that is personal. I'm just going to treat this as what would be good for the people to hear today, you know. And that, that can come from my personal Bible time, or it can just come from me picking a verse. about psalms <laughs> classic a wise son heeds his father's instruction but a mocker does not respond to rebukes okay so a wise son heeds to his father's instruction this is a double entendre because obviously god is our father so a wise son seeds his father's instruction right and that is most important, but also your worldly father is saying a wise son heeds his father's instruction. So, how have I done this recently? My dad gave me a chatting too because I've been working at a gelato store. And, you know, just not taking it very seriously, you know, like it's a gelato store. I haven't been taking it that seriously. Um, and they haven't been doing well. And the boss has come in and he's had a chat to us, you know, things need to change, ready, ready, rah. And um, the main thing is just around behavior while at work. And look, you know, what is that darn Kushinga? What is that darn Kushinga? Darn you, Kushin. What's that OG Kushin, bro? Darn you, Kushin. Darn you. Sprucage. Oh, darn you, Christian. Darn you. Perfect. Perfect. Gosh. Okay. Okay. Still recording. Aish. <sighs> okay, um, and so, uh, and my dad was just like, Josh, you know, um, I think you should really, I think you should really take your opportunity with your boss, you know, he's an entrepreneur, he have other entrepreneur friends, and, um, yeah, it's a great chance to just, I don't think he even knows about the, the real struggles they're in, but uh, he's like, it's a great chance to just, you know, make a great first impression. And, um, sorry, not make a great first impression. Just like, yeah, just, if you do well for him, he's going to tell his friends you did well for him, you know, it's that simple. And so I was really like, whoa, I was like, damn, you know, like, like, and I, and 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 I was a little like, like like damn, because I was just like, wow, facts, Dad. Like no one had broken it down so perfectly. Like I'd never thought the thoughts of why I should be trying to impress my boss. That had literally never entered my mind. Like why I should be going over and beyond to impress my boss. And that was just like, and 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 I and I was a little like 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 damn. Um. Have I not been doing this recently? Oh, my dad, my dad wants me to be earning more money, applying for a job. And like this morning, it was like, what have you got planned for the day? And I was like, gee, nux. And he was like, uh, gonna look for some jobs. <laughs> and I was like, mm, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and he was like, oh, really? Don't, don't, don't need more money. Or, or something like that, and I was like, I don't, I don't think I'd do it, 
And that's true, because uh, I don't think I do need more money. I just, there's just one thing I do need, and that's transport. So once I sort that out, then I don't have really any need for money. Um, and of course, I can always get more money if I need it. But anyway, <laughs> let's get back to the Bible. A mocker does not respond to rebukes. Okay, so this is just saying, you know, whether it's at school, whether it's at work, whether it's at sport, you know, if someone's rebuking you, uh, wait, but a mocker does not respond to rebukes. But a mocker does not respond to rebukes. Okay, well, now I'm confused. But a mocker does not respond to rebukes. A wise son heeds his father's instructions, but a mocker does not respond to rebukes. What's rebuke? Rebuke. Rebuke. I do it, internet. Express sharp disapproval or criticism of someone because of their de behavior or actions. Oh, okay. So, a mocker does not respond to rebuke. So, this is saying if someone... So, rebuking isn't just like... I thought rebuking was like mocking someone, you know? And it was saying you shouldn't respond to that. But what he's saying is a mocker does not respond to rebuke. So, when someone rebukes him and says, you should be doing this, you shouldn't be doing that, you know? He doesn't respond to it. He just sort of goes over his head. From the fruit of their lips, people enjoy good things. So, depending on what you say. Wow. From the fruit of their lips, people enjoy good things. So, depending on what you say, you will enjoy the good things. So, maybe just talking about how things are good. Like, God is great. God is amazing. But the unfaithful have an appetite for violence. So these people must be the faithful, as in they use their lips to do good things, enjoy good things, enjoy faith. But the unfaithful have an appetite for violence. So violence is what comes out of the mouth. It's like, <laughs> those who guard their lips preserve their lives. Wow. Those who guard their lips preserve their lives. So let's take it more than just swearing in dirty language. Let's go to gossiping. Let's go to... Obviously cursing, blaspheming, impure chat, you know, uh, that's very interesting. But those who speak rashly will come to ruin. Hmm. Preserve their lives, that's just another way of saying they go to heaven. Like how, how beautiful is that? Preserve their lives. You do stuff now that makes you have life in the future. And that is delayed gratification, people. Do good things now so that in the future you preserve your life. And then immediately in my mind, my mind shifts to me in a hundred years in heaven. As opposed to now, in the present day, what my body wants, what 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 my what my monkey brain wants, you know, it's like think about you in heaven, Josh. Now what do you want to do? You know? A sluggard's appetite is never filled. Let's find the sluggard. Sluggard meaning... What is the sluggard meaning? A lazy, sluggish person. Okay. A sluggard's appetite is never filled. So they... Oh, wow. So they always want more rest, more sleep. Oh, that's interesting. I've been feeling that recently. Like, on paper, sleeping so much. But not feeling that, uh, you know, actually energetic. Just making sure I am in shot at. Oh, damn, I am. <clears throat> so whether it's food, 
um, food, sleep, rest, whatever it could be. A sluggard is someone that is never satiated. They always need more of it. But the desires of the diligent are fully satisfied. But the desires of the diligent... Oof. But the desires... A sluggard's appetite is never filled. But the desires of the diligent are fully satisfied. Right. So, the, but the things that, like, diligent people want, diligence, having or showing care and conscientiousness in one's work or duties, so, people that are just very, um, I guess, disciplined and, you know, do things as they should be done, the desires of the diligent are fully set. Hmm. Okay, we can move on. The righteous hate what is false, but the wicked make themselves a stench. The righteous hate what is false. So if you are righteous, right, when you hear something that isn't true, you hate it, all right? You hate it. Um, when you... When you think something that isn't true, you hate it. You snap it out, you know. That's what Sotor, of course, I did all of last year was about. One of the top quotes is, what sort of they call it, life coaches, is you must become passionate or have a, have a hunger to always be eradicating lies from your life. The righteous hate what is false, but the wicked make themselves a stench. Stench? Strong and very unpleasant smell. They bring shame on themselves. Right, so I guess stinking is bringing shame on yourself, typically. This is not for drinking, this is for spitting. Risky there, isn't it? And ax ah Righteousness guards the person of integrity. So, you know, integrity, you think of something that like even behind closed doors you're always doing the right thing, you know? Like that's what I think of when I think of integrity. And so he's saying, you know, although people might not always see your in, your integrity, righteousness will guard you, and that will pay off big time. But wickedness overthrows the sinner. Wow, so it's saying overthrow, like, yes, he is a sinner, but that doesn't mean he should be wicked. But because he sins, wickedness overthrows him. One person pretends to be rich, yet has nothing. Another pretends to be poor and has great wealth. Yep, I like that. I like that a lot. A person's riches may ransom their life, but the poor cannot respond to threatening rebukes. A person's riches may ransom their life. I know that I'm gone. They see me blind out. Now they say that I was I got to think like, mm, yeah, I got to, yeah, yeah, yeah. A sum of money demanded or paid for the release of a captive. <sighs> a sum of money demanded. A person's riches may ransom their life. But the poor cannot respond to threatening rebukes. Mm, what? <laughs> the light of the righteous shines brightly. But the lamp of the wicked is snuffed out. The light of the righteous shines brightly. Okay, so it's saying, when you're righteous, people will see, God will see, you know, like it's it's clear to see. But the lamp of the wicked is snuffed out, you know, that's sort of... Hmm.
Where there is strife, there is pride. Okay, I know what pride is. Strife. Let's do that. Oh. Angry or bitter disagreement over fundamental... Okay, conflict. Conflict. But where there is conflict, there is pride. But wisdom is found in those who take advice. Okay, so do not argue with someone if they are trying to give you advice or something, you know. Just take it. Always take advice. Dishonest money dwindles away. Dishonest money dwindles away. But whoever gathers money little by little makes it grow. Interesting. Interesting. And you see, I'm on the benefit. So, or I, I get the payments from the benefit now and again these days. And it's like, is that dishonest money? You know? Like, I could work. I could work more. I don't want to work more. Is that dishonest money? But whoever gathers money little by little makes it grow. Hmm. Hope deferred makes the heart sick. But longing is a fulfilled. But longing a fulfilled. But a longing fulfilled is a dread of life. Well, ah, oh, that was enjoyable reading the Bible. Now let's get into the more uh, worldly topics that I've written down beforehand. So the first thing I'm going to talk about, and this is an idea I've had for a long time, and one that I was supposed to set up a while ago, um, I just still haven't done it, and that is setting up, but I've had further ideas on it today, setting up like a group of people who come together for individual training, but obviously you do it as a team, or at least as a group, you know, so you're having team trainings where the focus is your individual growth. And I wanted to set up one of these over the summer. I wanted to, um, yeah, get a group of 20 players, 22, 25, maybe even up to 30, regularly and just meet for games and drills and fitness, you know, whatever it may be. Um, because... I think just that added accountability and also it's better to train with people and also most people like having things planned for them. They don't have to like plan it themselves and I would have taken a big burden of that but I would have also loved for other people to help in that aspect um, and it would have been a great way for me to sort of practice my coaching as well, trying different tactics and... Um, Yeah, ways of breaking down the opponent, ways of defending, whatever it may be. Um, but I never did it out of laziness and a little bit of fear, potentially. No, probably just laziness. And something I need to eradicate. And we will do some push-ups just as sort of commemorate that. Eradicating laziness. <sighs> Um, and then I've also had ideas of setting up some sort of, like, football coaching thing where I coach players in small groups, um, probably younger than me, but I'd also feel confident doing it to people the same age as me, but this is also something I want to have in my own life, you know, so that's what I was thinking about today, it's like, oh, I actually want this, forget the business, forget, um, coaching, it's like, you need this for you. You don't train individually, so you need a group, you need that accountability. And it's like, I feel like I want something like jujitsu, you know, where you go to and you talk about it and like imagine me just chopping it up with people about football all day, that'd be perfect. And yeah, just that, that added motivation you'd get from it would be so nice and you know, there's people with free time, I'm sure they'd do it. Um... So yeah, so yeah, 
And yeah, I could also set up others for different age groups, skill levels, whatever it may be. And it's something I'd love to do for free. Maybe in the future I would charge for it. But yeah, something I would enjoy doing for free, at least for a bit. Till I actually get good at it, you know? But I think once I'm really good at it, it's fair to charge because I know I'll still be. I'll, I'll always make sure I'm over de de delivering on the value they're getting. Um, and yeah, I was just sort of thinking of in that aspect of like a BJJ gym, you know, where you come and you can sort of. The one person has a plan for how the training's going to go. Um, but you can kind of do your own thing at some points. There's lots of room for freedom. And. And, and what else? Yeah, and you can, you know, tell the coach, oh, maybe I'm a little bit lighter today, or whatever. And, yeah, that's the idea for that. Being aware is the best hack to succeed at anything, especially football. I only say especially football because that's the thing I thought about it in the context of. Um, but if you're into something else, just take what I'm saying about football and apply it to that. So what I mean by this is just being aware, just aware of things around you, you know? Like, literally, that's all being aware is. And this is for everything. I need to clarify. This is literally for everything. But I'm going to use football analogies. Okay, so originally... I was thinking, or just perspicacious, you know? Let, let me read out the, the meaning of perspicacious. Having a ready insight into the understanding of things. Having a ready insight and understanding of things. So... The person I think of a lot when I think of this is Robert Greene. He talks a lot about how just, like, observe the world around you, you know? Just look around and, um... But, yeah, that's something I really enjoy doing. Uh, it's... Yeah, I, I like people watching, I like observing social culture, um, just, you know, social beings in general, and I like seeing what comes out of that. Um, but beyond that, let's take it to a football level. I was writing before something we're going to talk about soon, which is taking from other sports and bringing them into your own sport, or taking from other teams, bringing them into your own teams, just that's again it's just a deeper level of being aware you know you're aware of what's going on around you you're aware of something's like shocking the world like crazy amazing and okay let me go off on something so as i was saying that i was thinking what are sports teams that have been historically successful and I thought of one the Warriors you know with their offense uh, they took spacing in the NBA and just sort of <sighs> if you're guarding us how much you have to run how much space you have to cover they took that to the next level and since the NBA has adapted and everyone's doing it but what about football? I mean, obviously, that's the point of position play. You, you stretch the field as much as possible so that you can have as much of the field as possible. But we need to be thinking about gravity as well, you know? Obviously, what the Warriors found out is the further away from the hoop you are a threat from, the more space the defence has to cover. And also, when you're all running around, rotating and everything, then... <laughs> Yeah. 
then you again just have more to defend. Which is harder to defend, leaving more space, which will create driving lanes, create open shots. And so in a football perspective, you can take this by, you would have a team who are all threats from, we'll say 30 yards, 30, 35 yards. When they have the ball in that area, they're always a threat because they can either shoot from long range, they can play a great pass, they could dribble a 1v1, or they can bang a long shot, you know? And so if you had, you know, four of these types of players, preferably six, eight, even more, then... You stretch the area the defense has to guard you in. Like, you know, some teams, when they guard Man City, they've got, like, two players just outside of the box and everyone else stacked in the box. It's like, because they don't think that City are that threatening from 30 yards out with all their players in there, you know? And so, yeah, obviously it's not just about the long shots. It's about how you work the ball around to create those opportunities, you know, the rotations, the spreading players out to create gaps in behind, create gaps in front of the defense. Um, And also just, yeah, knowing where players are going to end up. Yeah, and, and that leads us into bringing set plays to football. And I know set plays are a thing, like, you know, Roberto De Zerbi has them, and I'm sure almost every coach has them, right? But I'm talking about, like, this is a coach reading what the defense is doing and calling out players from the sideline because of that, you know? He sees, okay, I see them over committing to coming to the left winger's feet quite a few times. We're going to exploit that. We're going to make a run where, you know, it's designed to make it look like the left winger's coming to feet. Maybe we bounce it to him. Or just fake the pass to him. Someone, maybe the the 10, spins in behind to where the winger was, gets the ball at feet. Now he's, you know, if he's been able to clear his midfield marker, he might be one-on-one with a centre-back. Just pulled someone out of the back four, back three, whatever it is. And we now have more space to operate. And plus, we should have already gone past the winger now. So that defender should just be out of the play. And then obviously you'd want to commit a few more numbers over there. Making, then now the fullback making an overlapping run to receive the ball when the 10's driving at the centre back. Then you've got a 2v1 there. Or the striker's going to be 1v1 through or the wing is going to be wide open. So yeah, set plays like that. And, um, yeah, just the flexibility this would give you throughout the game, you know. Obviously, this is what NFL does. Like, NFL reading the, what the defense is doing mid-game is so important. And this is really where um, I can make a name for myself as an on-field QB, you know. I feel like I'd be able to read defenses very well, call out plays, call out what we need to do defensively, offensively. <laughs> and, yeah, defensively, it'd be very interesting because... Um, yeah, obviously you sort of have the press going into the game, whatever. You see how how the team is going and you think, okay, if we do this, we might be able to win the ball in a dangerous area. Um, yeah. Or if we do this, we can trap them into playing a risky pass into midfield. But we're actually covering it. We're one step ahead of them. And just thinking about it a bit more because you can only think about so much on the spot, you know, when you have so much freedom to make a decision. You can only think about so much, but it's just like when they make an NFL route, they're really telling the quarterback, most likely it's going to be this guy is going to be open. Or if it's not him, then it's probably going to be him. So you only have two, you know, simplifying the reads, simplifying the decision the player has to make on the ball while still giving them complete freedom to make whatever that decision is. So yeah, if Edison has the ball, he sees two strikers, 
and he sees a winger. One winger has sort of been half cheating to cover the third midfielder inside. <clears throat> or he's sort of starting, he's covering the winger's line. Let's say we're doing a three box three. He's sort of starting, he's covering the winger's line. No, sorry. Let's go two, three, five. Fullbacks are inside. They're pressing with two on the centre backs. They're pressing with two on the centre backs. And then they're bringing a winger inside to cover. To cover the players in the middle. On both sides, they're doing that. So they're pressing in a. 4 1 4 1. No, sorry. 4 1 3 2. Because they've got two on the centre backs, three on the three sixes, and then one covering the two pivots with the centre back also being able to step. And then full backs on the wingers. But the their wingers are starting to cover our wingers. And one's like like obviously cheating in. So you start by playing it to the centre back, who then waits for the goalkeeper, plays it back to the goalkeeper, that triggers the full back on that winger who was cheating to come down, make a line from the pass, and then the winger's most likely going to commit to him, which then triggers the winger to sprint down the line to where Edison or whoever the keeper is can play a ball to them and it should be able to be just like a ball along the ground as long as the centre back's not the striker's not blocking the line too much or something, but even if it's not, it should just be able to be a little clip over. Find them just like that. And sometimes when I think of myself, it's like how could I be most effective in football possibly? I think like I think of myself as quite a versatile player. And it's like, how could I be involved in every single zone of the game, you know? Like, how could I be involved in the build-up, and then be involved in the progression, and then be involved in the final third, you know? That would be ultimate value, because it's like you've got three players on the field. And yeah, being able to go back, call plays from the back what their defense is and obviously the preparation need is needed for this would be crazy and I guess that's why the NFL off season is so massive that would be an issue but if you did have a full off season and you had a bunch of young hungry players who were willing to adapt their games I think it'd be very interesting. Should we watch a video on how NFL offense works? You did. Okay, while that's loading, I'm going to talk about Arsenal's current team. So, I'm a Tottenham fan, and my favourite thing about being a Tottenham fan is hating on Arsenal, uh, despising them. But, because I want to be taken seriously in the football space, I have to be able to put biases aside. And I have to be able to see a team for what they are. And Arsenal are a juggernaut. Arsenal's current team is a juggernaut. As someone who loves players, like I love players, I love how players fit with each other. I love how different skill sets match together. I love I love player archetypes. Like I love looking at a player and looking at what they're good at and being like, oof. You know, how could this be best used? And Arsenal. Arsenal have all these different archetypes across their team that's just like, yeah, just any team would love to have. Like a Saliba archetype on your team. Quick, tall, strong, good in the air. Good at tackling, great in 1v1s, great at building out from the back, driving, passing, two-footed. Did I say quick? Like, 
those type of Rolls Royce Cinebacks just don't fall out the tin sky, you know. And he's also young. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, Gabriel Magachash, left-footed. I'm pretty sure I could have sworn. Let's look up FIFA 18, Gabriel Magahalash, because I swear he turned himself into a left footer. Gabriel. Um, FIFA 19. Seem to rated. Never mind, preferred foot left. He's always been left footed, eh? Yep, anyway. Um, and so left footed, incredibly quick, incredibly aggressive, right? Willing to step out of the back line whenever. Um... Comfortable on the ball, comfortable high up on the field as far as rest defense goes, you know. When Arsenal pin a team in at the end of their own box, you know, he's very comfortable being about 30 yards out. I wonder how much NBA thinks about rest defense, like if you had a miss or even. Concede, how was your defense set up? So go straight away. <sighs> um, Ben White as well. Height and skill set and defensive ability of center back playing right back with the technical skill of a midfielder. Tactical awareness to be able to pop up anywhere over the field. He plays as an overlapping right back. He plays as an underlapping right back. He plays as another pivot. He can do everything. Um, even. Mm. Uh, and then Odegaard, obviously, is someone who is proficient in all areas of the game. The final third, the middle third, the build-up third. We've been able to see his uh, excellence in the build-up phase a bit more recently. Um, with that sort of box midfield without Odegaard. And then he's able to run. Um, and then wide inverts. Or whoever, um, even Kui or invert sometimes. But he sort of started as a 10, you know, like a creative 10, creative hub of the team. Now plays more as an 8, still the creative hub of the team, but like very involved in ball progression. Um, still in both boxes, but. I genuinely think he could play as like a sitting six, like a DLP, Regista, uh, Barati, Tiago, Kimik, Busquets. His awareness is amazing. His eye for a pass is amazing. His beating the press is amazing. All the main things you need to be a good six. And I think he will honestly drift further and further back in his career. So he can have more control over games. Even have it. So a lot of teams would love to have that type of player floating in around their squad. There's a reason he got so much game time for every coach at Chelsea. Oh, I didn't even mention Declan Rice. Uh, yeah, Declan Rice, he's, um, Rolls-Royce midfielder. 
uh, elite, elite in the defensive side of the game. Eats up so much ground, covers so much space, and an elite ball carrier. Not an elite uh, build-up player, but I think he is honestly more of an eight. Oh yeah, I was wondering if NBA defences sort of can high press, you know, because obviously by just letting the other team start their attack 30 feet out from the basket, you're, you're sort of letting them play on their terms and they can kind of do whatever they want. I guess there is only the half court, to be fair, but... I wonder if you could just make that, uh, yeah, that, that transition to get over half court so tough and it's like as long as you cover the space as well and cover the zone as well, you should be able to yeah, really hurt a team's efficiency at getting up good shots. But it could also go very bad, obviously. And then basketball teams would start playing tiki-taka to get out of it.